Hello, welcome to uh, lesson eight. We will talk about uh, more catalytic conversion processes. We'll talk about in this class uh, about alkylation, about polymerization, uh, catalytic uh, reforming, and isomerization. All of these processes are catalytic processes to produce high octane number gasoline. Remember, for high performance, high power, we need it to produce high octane number gasoline. FCC obviously is the principal process in a refinery to produce high octane gasoline. Uh, catalytic reforming developed also during the Second World War was really a popular, very popular process. Now the feedstock for catalytic cracking comes from the light end unit. If you remember the naphtha fractionator in the light ends unit. The, the heaviest product from the light ends unit is the heavy naphtha. The reason it's heavy, it has a lot of naphthenes or cycloalkanes in its composition. So what happens in catalytic reforming, essentially con uh, converting these naphthenes or cycloalkanes into aromatics. Aromatics have very large octane numbers. Benzene, for example, has an octane number of 100. Uh, so that is highly, highly desirable, high octane number component in the refinery uh, blending scheme, if you will. Uh, so dehydrogenation of naphthenes using a precious metal catalyst like platinum uh, is, is pretty straightforward if you do have a clean naphtha, heavy naphtha. If you have sulfur associated with clean or with naphtha feed, you need to uh, hydrotreat it to remove because platinum is very susceptible to poisoning by sulfur. So you need a uh, pre-hydro treatment before catalytic uh, reforming. Now, up until 1990s, cat reforming was one of the most popular processes in the refinery as far as producing high octane number gasoline. But with the introduction of 1990 Clean Air Act amendments, the amount of gasoline or benzene and aromatics in gasoline were limited because of uh, environmental uh, issues or reasons of toxicity. So all of a sudden now catalytic reforming produces high aromatic content, wasn't so desirable, but the refiners could not give up catalytic reforming. Why? Because there is a byproduct from cat reforming that is very, very valuable for the refinery. It has become, well, of course, uh, increasingly valuable in the, in the recent times, and that is hydrogen. If you do dehydrogenate uh, naphthenes, the byproduct is hydrogen in addition to making aromatics. And hydrogen is needed in hydro treating processes, in finishing processes that we will be talking in the next uh, talking about in the next lesson. So that is the cheapest source of hydrogen. Obviously, you can make hydrogen from natural gas by reforming natural gas, and that is done in, in refineries as well to produce additional uh, hydrogen. But uh, the cheapest source of hydrogen in a refinery comes from catalytic reforming. So it's still used in U.S. refineries to make uh, gasoline, that is a reformate, and of course the byproduct hydrogen. The second process we will talk about is alkylation. Alkylation is in a sense the opposite of cracking, where uh, you have a larger molecule, you crack it into smaller molecules. In alkylation we do the opposite. We take the smaller molecules and combine them into larger molecules that would uh, fall in the boiling range for gasoline. So the feedstocks for alkylation are three to four carbon atom uh, alkanes, isoalkanes, isobutane is the principal uh, feedstock that comes from FCC, 
and also olefins, three to four uh, carbon atom olefins, that is propene and butane. So combining isobutane with propene or propene will, or, or butene will put you in the gasoline boiling range with seven, eight carbon atoms. And the resulting product will be an isoalkane with a high octane number. That would be uh, essentially making up the alkylate. So alkylation is an alternative to catalytic reforming to make high octane gasoline without the aromatic. So that looks like a, really a, a nice alternative, but there is one problem. And the problem is for alkylation, you would need as catalyst highly concentrated acids, like highly concentrated sulfuric acid or highly concentrated hydrofluoric acid. These are of course not easy to uh, work with or to transport or to have around because of the risks involved with using this highly acidic uh, materials. Uh, another process that uh, generates larger hydrocarbons from smaller fragments are called polymerization. The difference between alkylation and polymerization is that we use just olefins in polymerization. No isobutane here, so uh, we use three to four carbon atom olefins, typically again come from FCC process, combine them using a milder acid as a catalyst this time, so phosphoric acid. So uh, the problems uh, with handling phosphoric acids are not as severe as those with highly concentrated uh, sulfuric or uh, hydrogen fluoride uh, used in, in alkylation. Uh, so polymerization produces uh, branched uh, olefins, which also have respectable uh, octane numbers. The last process we will talk about is isomerization. That's actually adding branching to straight run uh, paraffins. This is essentially the light naphtha that comes from uh, the, uh, the light ends unit, as opposed to heavy naphtha that is uh, naphthenic. Light naphtha is paraffinic, but it has only straight chain paraffins with low octane numbers. So isomerization add branching to these uh, straight chains to increase the octane number. So all these processes just make high octane gasoline which is, of course, the most important fuel in U.S. refineries.